Welcome to Stitches and Sundries. This is a this is floss tube number 33, we think. Yes. It's been a little while. Um, it is the 16th of January. And we're back. We are year. back. A brief break, a holiday <laughs> break that then a holiday break. extended. Yes. Uh we were we were we were trying to figure out if we were gonna record uh the weekend of New Year and it was just too much going on, too much family stuff. Devin was still fighting her cold she had. It was, and so we just decided, you know what? A holiday break sounds wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, so welcome okay. to anybody that's new here. Uh, yeah, and I've noticed over the break, we've accumulated a few new subscribers. Hello, how are you? Hello. Happy to have you. Very happy to have you. And for all the people that keep coming back and uh, being here with us uh, as we dork around, uh, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, we are a floss tube, so we talk about cross stitch finishes, uh, maybe a little bit of sewing here and there, but uh, mostly cross stitch and all the fun, goofy stuff we get up to. Yes. I'm Lauren. I'm Devin. And you can find me on Instagram at Lauren Up Stitching. And you can find me on Instagram as Devin underscore no loose ends. Woohoo! You did the <laughs> intro. Uh, I have to tell you, Devin, it, this, this format, we usually get together and sit on this couch together. Mm -hmm. uh, this format is weird because we're flip-flopped. You're <laughs> usually here for me and on, now you're going to be on my left and that's awkward in our editing. I can see you. I can almost <laughs> touch you. If we do this, it'll look like we're. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, I, I miss getting together with you in person. I like it's been so long. I'm like, I don't even know who this girl is anymore. <laughs> I know. We're going to get together and then we're going to have to like go to lunch to like finish catching up. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, take it's, all day. It's, uh, it's going to have to be a, an outing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're doing it distant to, distantly today because we're supposed to get over 20 inches of snow today. Yeah, and it's <laughs> supposed to start at 11, which is smack in the middle of what time we usually record. Yeah. And also, it's supposed to be snowing at an inch per hour is the rate I have heard. Yeah, for over a day. Like accumulating an inch per hour. That is going to be insane. Jason, they're gonna have to shovel so much. We have to do so much shoveling. No. Ugh. We're trying to maintain like in our driveway, um, uh, three parking spots because we do have two cars now. The truck has died and been replaced with a Subaru. Nice. Um, so we have two cars under a carport and then we have a pull-in spot that is like where guests park. It's like, it's really like side street parking, but it's like a, it's like a swoop. Um, but anyway, we're, we were shoveling <laughs> new homeowners the struggle is real of where the shit do we put all that snow? Where do we put it? I don't know. I don't, we're just, we're, so we in shovel. The street, so the plows get it. Well, we're shoveling from the shoulder of the road in toward our yard because we have to bring it all in because we can't pile right. up in the shoulder. And we have to bring it in so people have a place to park. So yeah. that was like, it was funny because like we were debating as we're shoveling the last snowstorm. I'm like, we put, do we put it over here do we put it over there like I don't know so now there's yeah and then if you're if you're around here I don't know how the town of Frostburg does it and you shovel all that salty gritty stuff from the street you've just killed a flower bed like great <laughs> like we've just killed well, a I, I think I mean like we only have like two and a half feet of front yard anyway right I it's just it's just it's, just, it's gone yeah we don't use it Maybe I'll make a rock garden. I'll make a rock. That sounds wonderful. That, that sounds, sounds like wonderful. work that I'll never do. <laughs> you and me both, sister. I have grand plans. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I will say I have been up to a few home projects. Um, that's, that's sort of like what I've been doing over a lot of this break. They're small, like hanging up curtains. Hey, curtains are an important part of life. <laughs> Curtains are, and they're also difficult to, to decide on. So um, we have um, short, you, we can't have the really long, the 84 length curtains because all of our windows have radiators under them, like the tall ones. So 
um, at what we, but I did buy 84 <laughs> and I just like folded them under. So you can't tell, but um, I went to Walmart and I was like, holy shit, curtains are expensive. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so then I went to Ollie's and I'm like, I have some stuff like this could work. And then I went to Gabe's and oh my God, Gabe's has cute curtains. The glory they don't have Gabe. many. They've been ransacked. Um, but I got some really cute ones. They're like a white with a, they make like a flower pattern. And then like the flower patterns in gold. So it's like gold. It kind of looks like gold filigree. Like yeah, white, but it's a white background. The flowers themselves are white and just the outline of the flowers is in gold. That and so really it's cute. really cute and subtle. Um, and my super colorful living room looks great with them. <laughs> and then I got a blue velvet single pane to go over our, we have a, um, it's an old, uh, like single pane glass door. Like oh, it's yeah. got all the little, little tiny panes, three in a row, and I forget how many down the whole door, but they're all single pane glass. So it leaks air really bad. Um, so we got a heavy velvet curtain to hang over there. That's, that's like a, a light teal blue. That's a great idea. Yeah. Well, before that, I was hanging a Steelers blanket over it. <laughs> so now it's as a nice you curtain. As you do. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, what's that joke about bachelors? Like any piece of fabric can be a, a curtain. Exactly. Like Owl? just taping like. blankets over windows. Well, yeah, it's just, um, it's nice to have curtains. So, so far we only have curtains in the living room and the dining room. We need We're to get busy. kitchen curtains, but we definitely have to have short curtains. And apparently those are all sold out everywhere. Like, yeah. Except for Amazon, but I was trying to find something locally that I could feel and touch. Yeah, that's a, um, that's a hundred percent true with anything fabric. You want to like see it and touch it. See it. Yeah. So kitchen windows are still uncovered. To well, be that's awesome. Well, in both bedrooms too. So really we only, we didn't do much. <laughs> no, the places people see look nice. That's, yes, that's that is point. true. That is true. <laughs> that's well, totally the point. Um, we did a little bit of renovation for Christmas. My sister got me a giant poster. Um, we play Pathfinder. It's an RPG. And she brought me a three and a half foot by five foot map of the, the world we play in. Three and, and a uh, half foot by five. That's massive. Yeah, it's big. That's a wall. And when you put it in a frame, then you add the frame to that. <laughs> it's pretty much floor to ceiling. <laughs> like oh this my God. Giant thing. I think it sits three inches above our, we have baseboard heating. It sits three inches above our baseboard heating. And three oh, wow. <laughs> Um, so that took some, uh, real finagling to, um, to figure out because at first I was like, how do we get this thing on the wall without just taping a poster up, right? Like just taping a poster up like you're in a college dorm. Yeah. Um, and where did you find the frame? Well, dad, um, our dad used to own a, uh, business in town and they had a big cork board up in like the shop area that had all the, you know, the hip, not the hip information, your like, uh, you know, your unemployment information, your rights as a worker, like all those kind of like- EPR stuff, because every business display. has to have that. Right, and you have to have a bunch of that stuff displayed. So they had this giant cork board. So he's like, I mean, I, we can like scrap build a frame around it, um, but I have this giant cork board. And we were like, I had this, by this point, started looking at what it costs to frame something that big. Don't, don't ever Unbelievable. Look. It's, it's God awful. So I was like, hell yeah, we'll take it. Um, and then it was like huge. And like the corkboard part was like a quarter of an inch of corkboard over this like massive piece of like drywall or whatever he had put it on. Um, and so it was very hard to cut. We cut it down to the right size and scrap built a frame around it with just some pieces of wood we had. And it looks great. It looks fantastic. Maybe at the end, I'll wander. I'm filming for my laptop this time because my phone broke. Uh, so I'll wander out there and show it to you guys, but it looks great. <laughs> um, but then we had to have him over to like 
coordinate putting this massive thing on the wall so it didn't fall on it somebody <laughs> you know like find a stud and do all that stuff yeah uh, yeah that don't ask hanging, me hanging stuff up is just crazy like intimidating and when we mounted our tv it's above a fireplace and this house has been remodeled so many times around the fireplace specifically oh, we have no idea what our tv is mounted into but um in the words of my father-in-law, we hit something and it was solid. It's not going anywhere. And, you know, three months yeah. later, it hasn't fallen off the wall and killed anybody. So Could have been a stud. Could have been a brick. Could have been be brick. <laughs> Who knows? Very well could be brick. Who knows? Yeah. We, yeah. so like he had a stud finder and he's going across and it just wasn't finding anything because there's so many layers. So there's, there's um, plaster wall. Then there's wood paneling over that. And then there's brick, but around a fireplace, there has to be framing. And right. he measure guesstimated where framing would be. And that's what he drilled into. So he probably would, but he might've hit brick. That, Dad did the same thing. He took our ceiling tiles out, like down here, we have drop ceiling tiles. He took our ceiling tiles out so he could see where the studs ran. And then like his, his stud finder was just going off at random. It was just the stupidest thing. Yeah. But he's like, like you said like okay by that if I draw a straight line and then he dr drilled in and didn't hit anything and he's like wait turns out one of the studs had bowed and he just like missed it like it was just oh. very crazy but, yeah so yeah hanging shit up but anyway I also spent time stitching and crafting all kinds of stuff me too I mean I stitched one thing obsessively that's, uh, that counts as doing stuff. Oh, oh, hang on. I got to share this with you. So uh, we did our, our last episode was our goals and plans episode mm -hmm. and, uh, and a um, year end wrap up for 2021. So I'm a crazy person and I keep notes on all my stuff. And I thought, I, and I'm also like my job is data analysis and statistics at work. So what did I have to apply to my project? A little data analysis and statistics. So I'd like to share with you my, my total accumulated uh, stuff for 2021. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, so I had uh, between, between uh, two different crafts. So I kept track of my cross stitch and my crochet crafts. I had 16 finishes for the year of 2021, 13 of which were fully finished complete objects. Um, I had, uh, I'll go, should I save the crochet for the other, for the, that side? No, I think this is everything. I had six new starts for crochet, uh, of which I had to carry three of them into 2022. Um, or no, I had to carry it. So I had six new starts total, um, two of which were fully completely finished, two of which are, were finished, but needed the, like the endings done of them. They, so they carried over, mm -hmm. uh, one of which I completely abandoned, uh, the Cray Nebo sweater just was like, yarn not, was not working. working out, completely abandoned it. And one that was still an active whip that I had to carry forward, which is mm -hmm. Then I had three carryovers from 2020. Oh, maybe just a little choppy. I'm in maybe the basement. Just see that last part again in case it got cut out. Uh, I had three crochet carryovers from 2020 into 2021, of which I still carried one forward into 2022. The blanket. That's a blanket. Uh, but for cross stitch, the part we're actually talking about, I had 10 new starts and four that I carried from 2020, 2020 into 2021. So that was a total of 14 projects in, in uh, 2021, of which I fully finished eight of those. Oh. Uh, fully, completely, all the way finished. Um, I had one completely finished, but carried forward. Like I never, I finished the stitching, but I never fully finished it. So it carried mm -hmm. forward. Um, 
and I had four that I, five that I carried into 2022. So of the, what did I say, 14, I only had to carry five forward, like really carry it. I don't think I fully finished a single cross stitch last year. All of mine are wedding stitches that I need to order hoops for to frame them in hoops. Yeah, your bonbons didn't get hooped, did they? Nope. Everything is. I fully finished so much this last year. Yeah, you did. Looking at my, I'm looking right across from me is my Halloween banner. And I was like, oh, there's one that I finished and realized that I hung it like basically completely sideways. (laughs) Um, And just because Pattern Keeper tells me this stuff, uh, I stitched 35,000, basically 35,600 stitches in 2021. How did Pattern Keeper tell you that? Uh, I keep track of it every time I stitch. Oh, oh, because you write and it that down. Is only from July, July forward. Yeah. That's when I started keeping track. So mm. yeah, not bad. Wow. So that's my, that's my statistics. Sorry guys, you had to like go into my, my little, so this is my, my little thing that keeps track of them all and it has a lot of things and it had my statistics at the bottom. So and, is that an app? No, it's just a, a spreadsheet. spreadsheet. Okay. Uh, I started I, I it up really see it. it so. <laughs> All right. That's awesome, Lauren. You should be really proud of that. I am. I've done a lot of stuff. So let me think here. I have a new start that I also finished. I have a finish of a whip. Uh, and I have two whip updates, three whipped updates. I have one thing that I, it's a whip that I finished a section on. Do you want me to do finishes first? Yeah. All right. So, do, 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 do. over here, I got stuff laying all over the place. So, for my first finish, uh, I finished this one in, let me look here. I got my handy dandy notebook with all my stickers on it. Blanket. Hear it crackling. <laughs> All right, so I finished this on January second. So I knew it was I knew it was right at the beginning of the year. That's why I wanted to look. It turned out so good, so lovely. I love everything about it. It looks awesome, Lauren. Heal. All, I had to do a little bit of color conversion on the stars in the sky because uh, my fabric was so light. They were almost it's identical morning. color to the fabric. So I just used a darker color that was already in the thing. So that this is complete. Awesome. I'm very happy with it. I love it on this fabric with the, the modeling of the fabric. I think that mm-hmm. looks really nice. Um, I was originally planning to finish it on a piece of barn wood and make it like like a a wall hanging type thing and Sarah actually asked if I could finish it as a um more like a banner that she could hang on her door so that is I think how we're going to finish it is like you know a just a stick at the top a stick at the bottom so it's it's not heavy so it can be hung on the door so yeah he's done he's great this one took me I started this in June and finished it in January but it it had been put aside for a little while Mm. So I am super happy with that. So he, he looks really awesome. He he does like he pops really nicely. Um, so yeah, this will go on the thing to be fully finished. If anybody is watching The Witcher right now, because I am, because it came out on December seventeenth. Right, Ashies are in The Witcher. Yes. So I got freaking I, the Witchy Stitcher has such cool stuff and it's all very like folklore and it feels very timeless you know mm-hmm. like that guy's gonna be very like around for a long time i love her um chopped chopping mall i know i know that one's really cute i might need to have to do that one <laughs> um okay my other one was a new start i talked about it in our 
um, I believe in our goals video, um, I started the Flowers of the Month series by Ellen Maurer Stroh. Um, and I started with January. Oh, that's cute. And sweet. So let me pull it up here. That is really cute. I love those flowers. Yeah, they're very cute. They're just a very simple mm -hmm. um, motif. Uh, so I added the word January at the bottom. That is a, that is me. So it is just a square with a flower. Uh, but I wanted these. I'm going to put them on a little thing that might that should stand, and it'll either stand on my desk at work, or it will go on the. I have like a wall, a half wall behind me. I'll put it on that wall because um, I'm just going to try and get some stuff of mine out to my desk at work because that's that's how I want it. Um, I had some friends help pick this color fabric and I won't say I'm not happy with it. Like, I think it turned out beautifully. I think, I think it, it looks really good with that pink. It was such pain on my eyes, Devin. My oh no. Eyes. This green, like I could not tell where the green ended and the blue began sometimes. Oh, I could see that. Blues. And, uh, and now looking at it, I, I want to get opinions on the January. So I replaced a couple threads with some variegated threads, just for some interest. And I used mm -hmm. one of them for the January. I feel like that might not be enough contrast. Can't decide. So I think I will have to tell you in person on the video, I'm not able to see as well. I feel, I, I do feel like it's kind of like sweet life where the words were not popping. Yeah. It's, it's definitely like, because there's a fade to it, some letters show up more than others. Yeah. Um, I might go to the more salt. It's, it's not that much to pick out. So I might go to one of the more solid pinks. Yeah. Um, if you did that, one of those darker pinks, it might. Yeah. I think really so. pop. Maybe not this like a uh, very dark red that's like accent. Right, like, just one of the darker one. Salmon -y color. But um, the font I used is by, let me get my freaking thing up here. Cause I, I searched around for a font that I liked. I wanted it to keep with the flowers and not like, I didn't want a really chunky manly font. <laughs> you know, these very delicate yeah, flowers. Delicate feminine. <laughs> But I also didn't want it to be like script. I wanted it to be very legible. Um, and so I found, uh, it's called the Corners and Curls font and it is by uh, Screaming Heart Designs on Etsy. And I'm just gonna pull this up here so you guys can see. It's a very nice font. Yeah, it's just very nice. It's got enough interest that it's something but it doesn't look, um, it, but it still looks delicate. So I liked it a lot. Uh, so I will continue to use that. I think it, it, it fits in the motif. It makes it look like a little card, which I think is just perfect. So it looks I am- So are you doing every month on a different fabric? I am, I have another scrap of this blue. I probably will do another month on this blue. Um, so I'm gonna keep it on, this is 36 count. Uh, so I'll keep them all in 36 count and I'm just going to use scraps from stash. Nice. Uh, so this will be a, a good scrap buster. I like collecting scraps. So I have a lot of them. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that was a super fun project. It was very soothing to work on. It was, it, I took it to work several times and worked on it on my lunch break, which was very nice. So mm -hmm. So those are my two finishes. Do you want to do you want to do some whip? I have one whip. You guys seen this many times unless you're new here. I finished the S. That is so cool. You finished the I too, technically. I don't think we saw. Well, I had just barely any to do on the I. I had to do the whites of their eyes. Yeah. On um the Pac-Man eye. And then uh, pretty much the rest of December and the first week of January, I stitched obsessively on this um, Tetris S and it was intense. Um, 
there's a lot of black border around every letter. Mm -hmm. um, I did have, I did do some color changes, um, not by choice, just by stupidity. <laughs> I just like, so I got down all the way to this guy and it was supposed to be red and um, I think, I think these three were supposed to be different colors these last three and it was just I was stitching late one night and I knew one of them needed to be red and I just wasn't paying attention um to my pattern keeper I was kind of like in the zone of just I stitched all the black outline and then it was just okay you fill this one okay you fill this one right. and I mean it doesn't matter like you no. you know nobody's going to be able to tell it's wrong um but it definitely like uh, wasn't supposed to be those colors and then this color up here was only in it once this light kind of blue and because I stitched this yellow I couldn't then make this red because that would be two reds beside each other so right. I just decided to make, make this one like a light the light yeah, blue color. Like, yeah, get it in there but yeah. you guys it is coming along it is coming along so I'm getting there um in our goals video, I talked about making this like a higher priority and um, I think I'm kicking off with a good start. So we'll see if I can get the A done by the end of February. So um, one one letter kind of like in a month ish. That's reasonable, yeah. Month ish. Depend depending, some of those letters have a lot of stuff on them like that. Yeah, the A is kind of bigger, but there is some negative space in it. Whereas this was like, this was a lot of fill, like, you know, this was, this one had a lot of negative space in it. Um, you know, the tunnel was a oh. lot of fill, but this one went by really quickly because of the negative space between each of the little invaders. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the theme of the A? I think it's the coins. It's oh, yeah. coins. Um, That's the so. limited color palette too. So that'll help. Yeah, it will help to not have to change threads as often, but I do believe each coin is outlined in black. <laughs> of course. Which is like, I kind of feel, I mean, like, I know it make, it does make a difference because the uh, little invaders aren't outlined, but mm -hmm. like outlining in black on black fabric is yeah, you kind are. of frustrating. Yeah. I'm like, when it's framed and it's this far away, is anybody gonna be able to tell? <laughs> because nobody's gonna stand nose to nose with it and see those black stitches no, they're not. like I'm 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 not gonna skip it because it's not in the pattern but I kind of feel like why am I stitching this <laughs> why am I stitching and you talk about the the blue and the green hard on your eyes stitching black thread on black fabric is very difficult I believe it that would slow me down instantly it does and what helps is actually stitching at night and holding it up so the light shines through. <laughs> like, where's the light at? I can't find the hole. Because especially uh, like when you're at the X's and the two two like uh, crosses are touching and you need to get in there again with maybe a color or something, it's like hard to tell where that corner is. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm like looking for the light to shine through. <laughs> when I stitch the portraits that I did last, uh, I think I did those in 2020. Um, everybody was like, ooh, stitching on black fabric, so difficult. I was like, I didn't find it that bad, but I was stitching white on black. Yeah. But everybody said to stitch with a light underneath you. Like basically put a lamp like between your knees. And did like, you do that? No, I didn't. I didn't need to, but because I was stitching white, so it wasn't that, that bad. I don't put the lamp under my fabric, but I have like a... It's, it's one of the O lights from Joann's and it can tilt this way. So it's shining at me at this angle, not in my eyes. It's, I, anyway, Phew. excuse me. Bless you. Um, the light does come under the fabric at times and I just hold it up. Like, I don't have to hold it up here to get right. it. I'm just like, eh. okay, there it is. Yeah. So it's. Yeah, so that, that's apparently like the trick to do. <laughs> Do, 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 do. I have two, three more whips. I have an acquisition. 
Ooh, I have some acquisitions as well. I only have I'm one. Christmas. I have Christmas. Uh, okay. So let me think here. All right. So let's do a whip update on this guy. Position and here. Is, go back a couple pages. Oh, God. It's back so far because it's so old. <laughs> <laughs> This is Hobbiton by Nova Crossage. And I have made some, I would call it semi significant progress on this guy. Mm -hmm. The edge things all pulled up here. Do, 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 do. Ooh. I uh, see some windows. I feel like those are new. So, yeah. So I will put in a Thing of like what it looked like before so you can kind of see I'll put this over here so maybe you can get a comparison of what of it uh so you can just cover my face Lauren what whenever you put up the picture you can just cover my face you have tons of room right here tons of room <laughs> and like whenever we do this recording there's like tons of room above and below for like notes oh yeah working around um, of, of the crap I forget in the moment because my brain is dead. <laughs> me too. So on this one, I worked a lot on this side. Let me see if I can get a, find a way to, I worked a lot on this side. Uh, I finished up the bottom pathway here, which is, this thing is like so much confetti, so much confetti. Um, I worked up here and got a lot of this frame done. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty much to the edge done. Like this is the size of it. This one's all the way out. Wow. Um, and so I am just gonna continue to kind of fill in these small spaces and work up and finish Bilbo. I am, let's see here. That looks awesome. I am at 80% complete. Wow. Um, that does not include the lettering down here, but I will be doing the lettering. I'll probably consider that like a different percentage to go. Is is the lettering in the pattern? No, I am putting different lettering than the pattern. Okay, that's what I the, thought. The pattern says whole sweet whole and <laughs> bonk. <laughs> bonk. Uh, I just didn't like that. And um, Ruth, my friend who I'm stitching this for mentioned that she liked, um, I think it's like either the first or second line of the Hobbit that says, um, in a, in a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm going to put that and I'll, I'll find a really cool font and do that up nicely. Um, so yeah, it's coming along. It is a, it is a difficult stitch. It is so much confetti to get all these little shades and fades of the, the bushes and the, up here's a lot of black because it's the, the hangover of the hill. Um, Bilbo, but you can see Bilbo's way coming together now. Yeah, he, he really looks like a people guy. In there. Um, and his little smoke rings are a little more defined. Yes. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, yeah, set up 80% complete. My rule for these is if I hit 90, everything goes to the wayside. If I hit 90%, we put the pedal to the metal and we finish. That's what happened with Leshy. I was like, I hit 90 and I'm like, nope, all other things are on hold. And I finished <laughs> it over New Year break. And I was like, so um, I'm very close to having that. And, and that's getting, awesome. So. Uh, and uh, one of my goals is to always have a gift stitch on, on going. <laughs> so I'm going to probably the, uh, a few more stitches into this. I'll start thinking about what my next gift stitch will be. So um, one of my goals is to do a small stitch, um, do, do a few more smalls. And um, I have been looking for some small springtime cross stitches because I'm, I'm looking for, you know, um, some small spring decorations for my house. So that's, that's like one of my like upcoming Things. Also get you out of the, the winter funk. Yeah, I have some patterns here that I found I could show real quick. Sure. They're from, um, all of these were shared on that uh, cross-stitching 
2021, the Halloween group that yeah, the Halloween challenge cross stitch group. I can never get the name right. They changed the name to be way easier now. I think it's just the hollow the 2022 Halloween challenge or something like that. So oh that's so that's cute. just like a cute little guy. And then there's and uh that one doesn't say who it's by. Oh, it does. No, it doesn't. I like. Yes, it does. It's Doreen Jones. Oh, yeah. Doreen Jones. She does such fun things. This is the actual chart, but it's a free pattern of hers. Oh, I love that. So these were all somebody shared these. Um, and they're just like, I've been looking for some spring ones. And I thought, why don't I start with what I saved in my phone forever ago? And here I found this one, which I have to. There you go. The, oh, a Merry Christmas one. It's Merry Christmas. And I'm like, I loved it because it was so colorful. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I need to do that. So these are just some uh, like free little ones. Those are all Halloween. So I'm not going to show those because I'm trying to do the, I want to do a winter stitch, even though winter is like by the time I finish it, or maybe even by the time I get it started, winter will be over. <laughs> yeah. But um, April. <laughs> I, I want to do a winter stitch and I want to do a spring stitch that are small, not big projects. Like the Merry Christmas one, it it should still be a pretty small stitch oh, compared yeah, to like so life is a game. Life is a game is what I'm calling big. Needs yeah. Smaller. <laughs> yeah, that one's ginormous. Yeah. So. Um, I realized when I was kind of like organizing my stuff and finishing up a couple of things that I usually have about four projects in my rotation. I might have a few like whips that are like waiting to be brought in, mm -hmm. but I usually have one big project, um, one uh, spooky project, one gift project, and then one like other can be anything project going at a time mm -hmm. and so with Leshy done with the guardian of the woods done I really need another spooky <laughs> to put in there so I I literally went Wait, I like, thought you were stitching less Halloween Lauren one at a time it's one at a time <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually went into my Etsy and like went to like my first saved things and was like what's in here like you save stuff all the time like maybe you should actually stitch those things you save. But yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Because right now I'm all out of whack because of this other whip. So I have one more whip up or two more whip updates. So this one has currently been put into the rotation because I finished up Guardian of the Woods, but it does not count as spooky. Uh, so it goes like this. I think is the way I'm stitching it. Uh, this is the mandala. Oh, it's back. And again, I'll put in a where it was last time because it's been a million years since I had this out. Uh, so this one. That one's really pretty. Yeah. You're not too far off. You only have two quadrants, right? We're done. I'm not too far out on this one. Let me see here. That's going to be the next you hit 90 and done. Yeah, it's not bad. It, it's hard to take to work because it is very small stitches. I am stitching this on, where the heck is this one? Hang on, I gotta find it in my book. Is it so old? Yeah, it's that old, Lauren. It is that old. It's old. Uh, da, 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 da. The beginning of last year. Uh, this is, oh, by the way, it's Mandala 0267 by Kana and Elon on Etsy. Um, really and I'm stitching it on 28 count even weave, one over one. So it's very small stitches and there's just not good light and not good setup at work. So I can't take it to work. I tried. Yeah, that one is challenging. It, it would be so small. Yeah. I'm at 73% on this one. So not, uh, Hobbiton is farther along. But I do feel like when you worked on this, it didn't take you long to get a whole quadrant done. It's, it's really not. So I spent two evenings on this. Granted, they were probably, it looks like they were Saturdays. Nice evenings, yeah. And I got this whole leaf done here. This leaf here in the middle was not complete. I got these two leaves and these 
almost four teardrops. Yeah. Done. So all I've got is this middle spray to finish, and that is another quarter done. Yeah, that so, one that one is gonna go quick. It cut yeah, it goes quickly when I have the time for it. So I'm I'm wondering if I should pick a spooky or finish this. I probably will just put the pedal to a metal and finish this. So I really like this on this light blue fabric. Again, my sister helped me pick the colors because I do not do colors very well. Um, it's really cute on that blue. And I'm going to finish this one as a pillow. I know I'm going to do that. I think that you should put the pedal to the metal on that one. You know why? Do you know what time of year it is, Lauren? It's time for that new to you make along again. <laughs> <laughs> so the timing would be the same, perfect the same goal i had last year that i didn't complete i can just do the same one exactly and actually get it done this time there you go i did however cancel my craftsy membership which is how i was going to learn to sew because they gave me the deal for five dollars and then tried to renew it at 98 dollars, and i said no no oh dear no. <laughs> So uh, that is coming along. I really like it. It looks great. Um, I'm happy to have it back. It's very soothing. It's a very soothing stitch because it's one color. And so you just kind of just go and you just like follow your thing wherever it'll take you. It, and if you end at a point, you can't go anywhere. You're just like, all right, just start again. Follow the path. It right. looks like a very soothing stitch. I have, um, I just purchased a mandala pattern from I was trying to look it up here um Panachka I, I don't think I need to look it up um I freaking love Panachka I just purchased it from her um my phone's my phone froze so I'm not looking it up <laughs> but uh it's a cute little pink mandala thing um if you watch any of our last episodes it'll be in there I know we added pictures of them um but the, it is such a cute stitch. And like, whenever you talk about this one, I'm like, I need to do a mandala. It sounds really soothing. It is, it's very nice. So. It's very nice. Uh, and you got me all that beautiful mandala stuff for Christmas. And I'm like, I need to get, I need, you need to make a whole set out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. All right, last whip update and a slight bit of haul. So this, this comes with a slight bit of haul. Last whip and then start of your haul. <laughs> yeah. So. For Christmas, I asked my dad for one of these. So I got myself. Oh a my gosh, Lauren. And of course, on it right now is my cryptid. So I will I'm get so jealous of this. <laughs> I will get them off the frame here in a second to show them to you properly. But I wanted to show them. And this thing is easier to show with a piece of fabric on it because the fabric is kind of what's holding it taunt. Um, but so I asked my dad for this after over a year of me waffling whether I wanted one. Uh, so uh, while I but take you this, said they're not one, they're not exactly like yeah they're not cheap. So I they're an investment. I'll give a bit of a review while I take this out. So if you don't mind me looking down while I give my bit of a review. So this one is a. Omnic frame, you see kind of, mm -hmm. and uh, it comes from Estonia, and this one cost about one hundred and fifty dollars. So I had to ask my dad for it because it's not something. Woo! I and as a person who has consistently been like, I'm not sure about frame stitching, about scroll frames. I'm not sure about stitching outside of my very comfortable um, Q-snap. This has made a huge difference, especially for large projects like um, like cryptids, like a full coverage. Oh my gosh, I bet that would make a massive difference for life as a game. I'm not sure if it's worth it. It's 100% worth it. It's 100% worth it. Um, I love it. It is fantastic. It keeps my entire project taunt uh, and I can just keep uh, tightening it with these little doodads on the sides here. They can mm. just keep making that, you know, adjusting it. Um, it is super easy to put together and super easy to use once it's together. So like these little ends are just 
they just set in so they're not tight and uh it does not stretch you don't have to sew your uh piece to your frame which makes a huge difference there's no sticky velcro there's nothing it uses these dowel rods in this slot whoops let go let go uh it uses a dowel rod in a slot to like apply pressure and keep it so the dowel rod goes in and then it's just pressurized against this opening mm -hmm. and so it's just very it, it's it's a very simple design that's very brilliant and works great. Mm. So let me pull this off here. Let go of me. There we go. All right. And I'm going to unroll a little bit. I'm not going to take it all the way off. So here's my update on cryptids. So the last time you saw it, I had part of Chupacabra done. I think I had its frame done, but only like part of him. Uh, so I got Chupacabra completely finished. I got Hopkinsville Goblin done, uh, and I got the Frogman done, and I started on Jack Lowe. It looks well. good. I uh, love Frogman. One man. side of frame. <laughs> that frame, damn. The frame is a beast. Um, I love this stitch, but the amount of little frames that's in it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of is like oh my god yeah it's a lot of i was telling um, Sarah last night like i really do love it i love all the black i love how it stands out it has oh real and good. the frame is adorable like yeah. i love that it's got all the shape that it does and the little curly cues and like up at the top where it says cryptids is a really cool font i love everything about this pattern but it what doing is it? a <laughs> lot of black stitching yeah it's a lot um, I did make a little modification here on the Frogman. Oh, what'd you do? Uh, so in the original sighting slash legend of him, he has a magic wand. And that is like the best thing. Like he has a little magic wand, guys. And so the wand wasn't included. So I, in backstitching, added a wand and some little magic sparkles. Let me get it in there. You see that? Um, that is really cool. And I will put in a picture here of a poster that I bought my sister for Christmas of the Loveland Frogman. And you can see his little magic wand. And I was like, he needs, he, what other cryptid has a magic wand? Like you have to have a magic wand. <laughs> um, so I had to put that in there for her. That's and really cute. Going to go in her room. So she did, needed to have that. Yeah. So, yep. And so I started Jackalope and... Uh, made some good progress on him. Uh, it is coming along. I am at, what am I at? Seven out of 16 cryptids. Yeah, seven out of 16 cryptids. So if I finish Jackalope, I'll be halfway done with the cryptids. Um, I think there's 16. I think that's right. Uh, and I try and do the frame that touches them as I go. So like the Jackalope, I'll bring that frame out and keep going. So that's nice. Cause I have, I think I have Jackalope done on mine, but I don't think I have anything else. Or no, I started the frame for the Yeti. No, you start Yeti? I didn't stitch Yeti yet. I started his frame. That's how I always start. I wanted, it. so um, the Kraken came out and I'm like, I'm ready to skip ahead and just do him. Cause yeah. I, think, I think he's up the side one I already finished. Yeah, you totally, yeah. So around. I might jump around because um, I was really excited for Kraken and then uh, Nessie is out. I'm like, oh, she's releasing all the ones that I really, really love and I need them. And I have wanted to stitch on that one, but um, so I busted my hand. <laughs> What'd you do to yourself? Uh, stitching on Life is a Game. I think I did too much at once. And I have had to live in Icy Hot for a little bit. Um, it's awful. I, I also think it's, um, I think I'm using, so you gave me that really big blue hoop. And while it gives me more stitch area and I don't have to move the frame as much, I think the way I'm holding it is like really hard on the hands. Mm. So I need to yeah. go back to a smaller hoop because the smaller hoop, I did not have this much problem. I just had to move it a lot. 
you need to get a Q-snap because it's chunkier. It actually has something. It gives you it. more, yeah. yeah. And that is part of the problem I have with stitching too is um, uh, I, I definitely have like the carpal tunnels, like we, we know this, yeah. but yeah. Um, when I hold the little like needle to do cross stitch, um, I have to stop and go like this a lot and do, I do a couple of like hand stretches. Like this one is really good to kind of like get those muscles, get those muscles warmed up because uh, if I don't do that, then I'll be stitching and then just my fingertips go numb. Oh, that's Fine. awful. But you know, when I'm at work on a mouse for eight hours, like it doesn't, nothing happens. My hand does not go numb. I do have a wrist rest for my mouse pad, but it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't go, it didn't go numb before it. That, that really small delicate motion is just yeah. like it's triggering a nerve you know it is it's doing something and I don't have the problem with knitting but knitting is like very I'm, I'm really just doing this yeah it's like, minimal motion yeah yeah what you're trying to get yeah I also got i um, talking about haul I I also got um the Lowry frame to hold this giant thing uh it's it's the right size that it could just sit on my armrests it's great to do that um i just have wanted a lowry frame for a while um so i just got the basic basic um lowry frame and so it holds it for me and so now i'm like i have all this space Ooh, i can do two things at once Ooh, like ooh, i can do this stuff so it's really nice uh but yeah that that holding i have done that too where like my arm is like Oh, it's a noodle arm from holding the cue snap yeah. too long or holding the, 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 and I noticed yeah. it too, the hoop is too small. Like it's just what, not enough. What size cue snap do you have? I think I have an, I think I have an 11 by 11. Mm. And I think that's, that's a pretty good for most projects. Yeah. Like this little guy I had to put in a, as you can in see, because mm -hmm. it was just, yeah, so I have life as a game, a 10 inch hoop. And the way I was holding it, <laughs> <laughs> there's probably a better way to do this but listen I lean that sucker up against my belly and in order to give this arm a break I hold it with this arm and then I'm stitching with this arm no so I do I do that I do that no it gives it gives this arm a break because like, well, sometimes I'll like so it's like two inches from my face yeah yeah <laughs> Well, like I was looking at myself holding it one day and like my wrist was like this and I'm like, that's the problem, Devin. You find something out, like figure this out. Yeah. Yeah, find the comfortable way to do it. Who cares what it looks like? Yeah. Well, I don't have a chair with arms right now that uh, has good lighting. So I need to make yeah. some changes. That but, does, that does. You don't have anywhere to like lean to really. Yeah, yeah. I was, um, when I was stitching a lot, I had a, TV dinner tray that I would like kind of rest the front of the hoop on so I didn't have to hold it as much mm -hmm. so that helped but the setup has all I've rearranged the living room like 15 times since we moved in so. right yeah definitely I also have an acquisition hit us it's time for some acquisitions ah. okay this is the only thing I have um so for Christmas Jason's sister got me this is an embroidery kit and I figured floss tube is the perfect place to do an embroidery. I have never really embroidered. <laughs> I have done minimal stuff. Like I've done French knots and back stitching with cross stitch patterns that have had that detail in there. Um, this kit comes with everything you, um, everything that you need to do it, even the needles. You can see they're here. And so it's really cool because the fabrics, I mean, I've never had an embroidery kit. So this is like the fabrics not only printed, but it's actually like, um, like I've seen them where they just have an outline on them. This one's actually like colored in. Oh. And so I've never seen one like this. And I, I don't know anything about embroidery. So maybe this is more normal than I, than I think. I don't um, know. Yeah, I know nothing either. How I think the ones at Walmart, one? like you said, just have an outline. Okay, it goes like this. This is the top. So um, what's cool is like this green leaf is not fully filled in with embroidery. Like in the picture, the light green 
this limey green is just stitched on top of it to give it like an outline. Yeah. But then the flowers are full fill with embroidery stitches. Right. And it has like picture tutorials for how to do stuff, but I'm going to be watching some videos. Yeah. That is so cool. That's such a neat gift. So yeah, I'm, I decided, I mean, like, I don't know when I'm going to do it, but it is springy. So maybe I should like put it in the rotation. It comes with all the thread and the hoop. So yay, I have another hoop. Yes. <laughs> um, try to hold up these. These are really floppy and soft. Um, this is, the thread is Craft Crush. Never heard of that. Um, this is not getting accurate colors at all, but. Is it cotton? Is it silk? Is it something special? I don't know. It's super shiny. It is super, super shiny. Um, does the box tell me? No, it just says skeins of embroidery thread. So it's probably cotton. It's probably cotton, yeah. I will read the directions later, which I have now lost. <laughs> Off to a great start. But that is my acquisition for- That is really cool. Um, yeah, it's cool. And I'm always excited to have new needles. So yay. Absolutely. New materials, new stuff. Yeah. All right, where did the, oh, there it is. So I got a couple of things for Christmas, as well as a couple things that I ordered a while ago that just came and a couple things I forgot <laughs> last time. Ooh, sounds like you got a lot. Uh, not a crap ton, but just some little, little odds and ends. So um, we talked about the last time I went to the Village Sampler down in Charleston, West Virginia, I showed my um, fabric that I got because I always buy scraps because that's my life. Uh, but I also got two patterns that I completely forgot uh, to bring up. So I got uh, Family Roots by the Stony Creek Collection. Oh, that's cute. And I'm going to stitch this for my aunt because it's it's a perfect sentiment, I feel like. That's really cute. It's very cute. Um, it does have this specialty bead on it that I will probably go buy. <laughs> that little owl. Um, and it's just a very nice, like, it's beautiful colors. It's a very simple stitch. I think the sentiment is beautiful. So that is probably going to be a gift for my aunt. Um, and then, let's see how bad this, oh no, it doesn't shine too bad. Uh, this is by Plum Street Samplers. It's called Eat Crow. It is definitely going to be one of my spooky stitches this year. Because, <gasps> oh, that's cute. Uh, I freaking love vultures. I know that's weird. Uh, and you never see them. You see crows. You don't see vultures out that much. I have a vulture decoration for my front porch that goes out in October. And of course you do. And it's come in in Halloween and it does not. It stays out way long. Of course you do. I love that guy. Uh, so this little, he's got a little crown. Oh my God. Like, I love it. So this is going in my spooky stitches. So uh, I saw this on the, like one of their like spinning rack things. And I was like, Psh, choo, that goes in the cart now. Uh, so those are, those are really cool. Uh, my sister also bought me, I'll keep with patterns. Uh, my sister bought me several patterns for Christmas. Uh, she showed me, she was so excited. She very much went to the witchy stitcher website and was like, and this one, and this one, and this one. And uh, so she got me several witchy stitchy patterns. So let me get those up. The tablet loads very slowly in the basement. Uh, all righty. Uh, so this one is also going to be an early uh, spooky stitch. Of course, it's, I mean, it's a witchy stitcher. Of course, it's going to be spooky, right? Oh, you tar jerk face mm -hmm. my tablet has been struggling to connect to the internet lately now I, if you're looking at tablets do not buy a fire a, a amazon fire tablet it is garbage they are uh, i have i have had my own struggles with them they don't multitask well no 
No. Like, like you open up Chrome and then you also open up Instagram and you can't go back and forth between the two. It like forgets your Chrome history. Yeah. And that's like really basic. Yeah, that's like what we need a tablet for. Uh, it's trying. All right. So one of the ones she bought, I'll do it. In, oh, there it goes. There it goes. Uh, so this one is called A Stitcher Haunts Here. Let me get that close enough that you can see. Uh, it's just a little haunted house with a little ghosty goo. That looks like it's going to be really little. Uh, it, it, it's not huge. It's not a huge one. It is just, um, it's just a little thing. So you, she wanted a couple that were more... Um, that didn't necessarily have to be seasonal, that were more like could generically be out all the time. Um, she also got me, let's see here, see if it'll load. Uh, this one is Baba Yaga. So very similar. And these, I'm sorry, I'm just showing you. Oh, it's so there cute. Goes, there it goes. Uh, it's got a very similar vibe to the um, Leshy that I just finished. And it says, Turn your back to the forest and your front to me. Um, a quote from the Baba Yaga myth. So very cool. Cute. Uh, let me see here. She also got me uh, because she was like, when, when she saw it, she was like, you're going to stitch that for now, right? Stupid, stupid thing. I'm very angry about this. It just keeps losing the Wi Fi like constantly. Um, she also got me the Krampus one. I can't show it to you because it's there now. Uh, and uh, I think that, oh, she also got me uh, I Practice Stitchcraft, which is right there now. Uh, all of these are super cute, fantastic. Oh, and she got me the Tower Tarot card by the Witchy Stitcher. Uh, all of those are super cute. I really, I love the Witchy Stitcher. I love everything she does. So all of these were great picks. Um, and we'll be done. I was going to try to pull them up, but my phone is also being dumb. It's stupid. Life is stupid. Uh, the last one she got me is one that is like, oh, she saw me looking at it and like made a note. You gotta love people that know how to gift. Uh, this is, uh, They've got it named really, really weird. Um, this is by Son of a Stitch on mm -hmm. Etsy. That's uh, right. It's called Anime Characters Inspired Cross Stitch. I think they thought they might get copywritten. Um, it's the Cowboy Bebop intro. Oh my gosh. Uh, this thing is amazing. It's this massive. Thing, That's like poster size, right? Uh, it can be. It depends on the size you stitch it on, obviously. Um, so it can be up to um, like 14 stitches, 14 inches tall, um, but you can keep going. You can keep making it bigger. I love this sucker. I love Cowboy Bebop is one of my favorite uh, shows back in the day. I still rewatch it semi-regularly and uh, she saw me looking at it. I have a couple of anime uh, cross stitches. I found a Lupin the Third. That's super important to me. <laughs> um, and Samurai Champloo, that's another one that's really great. Uh, but she saw this one and grabbed it for me. So I'm very happy with that. That's awesome. That, oh, last uh, little bit of acquisition is this finally came. I ordered this a while ago for my birthday. Um, this is from Owl Forest Embroidery. It is their kit to do the pattern Rooks. Let me get that in there. That is really cute. I really love this pattern. I loved the entire thing. And so for so my birthday, Is that embroidery or cross stitch? It is cross stitch. Um, so I decided to get the whole kit for my birthday. Mm -hmm. I had got, I got a gift card. And so I decided to get the entire kit, which comes with the fabric, which is beautiful. Ooh kind of brawl. That's look. nice. I like getting the fabric. Yeah, it's nice. A really cute needle minder of the book. Ooh. Uh, the pattern in paper form, which I would have preferred a PDF, but I think I can, I think I can live. Um, as well as 
tan dyed. Oh, those threads are cute. Dyed. Look how beautiful those, those are. Those are really pretty. Those are really good colors too. I love those greens. Yes. I am just like head over heels in love. Uh, I love pretty much everything Al Forest Embroidery makes. Um, they do so many beautiful, like not quite a sampler, just like a lot of motifs and things mm -hmm. of folk tales, fairy tales, legends, um, just the most beautiful florals. I just, they have a style and they are very, very good at it. <laughs> and they are on my Instagram feed all the time, all the time, just tempting me with their custom flosses and their full kits and their beautifulness. How dare they? So I had to get one. So I That's cute. really cute. But it came from Russia and therefore it took, took forever. basically from October till now. I think I got it right around Christmas. So wow. Uh, to get here. And the last thing is a dorky thing. I went to Four Seasons Go Fabric. Oh. I went and I was like, what do you got little pieces of left? And so I got some. Uh, this one is. Uh, this one had no tag, no nothing. So I have to like figure out the count, figure out and decide what it is. Mm -hmm. um, if it is 36, which I don't think it is, I think it's 28 looking at it. Um, if it was 36, it might be one of my flowers. And then I also got this, uh, this one has a tag. This one is pearl gray, 14 count Ada. Nope. 14 count. No count listed. No count listed. Pearl gray Ada. Pretty. I got it. Gonna have to count. Now that's it. That's it. I have, that's all my stuff. That's everything I have. <laughs> we did it. We did it. <laughs> Give us a break and apparently we make some progress, huh? <laughs> a month. A month. It was almost a little over a month. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we, we recorded like, yeah, on like December 15th or 20th, something like that. Yeah. And then yeah right it is now like i said january 16th so yeah, it's a month mm -hmm. yeah i wrote december 20th to january 1st is what our last episode was supposed to be mm -hmm. the time frame so yeah it was actually december 20th to january 16th yeah two extra weeks we made some progress i uh, yeah catch us in the knitting episode and you'll see what i've been doing oh my gosh i don't even <laughs> want to know no i want to know i want to see uh, so we will be back in, I think we're back on our regular rotation yes. now. We're out of the holidays. Um, so we'll be back in two weeks yes. with more updates and everything. Please tell us what you did with your holiday. Tell us what yeah. you've got anything especially cool and amazing. And, uh, I can't wait to hear about it. I've seen some awesome, some of our subscribers can't remember their subscriber names. So I'm not going to name names, but I've seen some of them on Instagram now uh, we're, we're Instagram friends. I've seen some of their updates and I'm like, oh, it looks so awesome. Yeah. I just, so one of them is doing the cryptid stitch and she's so far ahead. I know. <laughs> I, I like got the whole frame done. I know. <laughs> like, yeah, no, not me. <laughs> Don't look at mine. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but right. um, yeah, we're so, so happy to be doing this. I'm happy to be back on track. Uh, yeah. I don't know if we'll be in person or in Zoom again because uh, right now it's weather based, you know, uh, an inch an hour is a lot of snow for us. And um, yeah, it was a kind of intimidating to, to think about driving and maybe getting trapped in Gary County. <laughs> yeah, it is a little after 11 o'clock. So I now want to go upstairs and see what it looks like. It is not snowing here yet. I have you a window right there. Earth. You're in like the tropics. Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> there is still snow on the ground here from the last snow. So. Yeah, I think the uh, the direction the storm is coming from, someone said that it's like, like normally like you guys would not get hit nearly as bad as us, but because of the direction it's coming from, we're all getting hit equally. Yeah, it's, it's going to be bad, but <laughs> we're all prepared. <laughs> yep. So guys, we will see you on our next regular two week schedule. Um, and we'll hopefully have more progress to share with you. Yep. And uh, as again, like, please, like, if you're new here, tell us more about what you're working on. And uh, we'll see you again in two weeks. Bye, Bye. guys. <laughs>